Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, equilibrium of solids. That's what we will discuss today. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, which is, by the way, completely free uh, and no advertising. Um, because if you found it on YouTube, for instance, uh, searching on something, um, well, it, it contains only video. The uh, website, unizor.com, contains uh, not only this course, which is called uh, Physics for Teens, but also uh, Math for Teens, which is prerequisite for this course, and some other thing. And uh, also, uh, every lecture has a textual um, notes to this, which basically serves as a textbook. And there are even exams for those who would like some challenge. So, equilibrium of solids. Well, first of all, let me just remind you that before, in the previous lecture, actually, uh, on this topic, um, we were talking about equilibrium of points. And this is kind of an easy thing, um, because it's actually uh, a direct consequence of uh, the first Newton's law, which says that if all the forces are balanced, then the point, the point object, if you wish, which contains, you know, it, it has certain mass, etc., the point object is uh, either at rest or um, in the uh, uniform motion along the straight line in some kind of an inertial uh, frame reference reference frame frame of reference uh, in other words you can say that if the frame of reference is associated with this point object with all the forces balanced um, then this frame of reference is inertial so, if you have a point, and you have certain forces which are acting on this point, where i is an index from whatever to whatever, then the um, vector sum of all the forces should be equal to null vector, and this is a condition of the equilibrium of a point. And that's what we were covering in the previous lecture. Now, in this lecture, I would like to talk about solids. And the first obvious consequence from the fact that this is a solid um, is that this is not a sufficient condition for an object to be in equilibrium. And the obvious example is if you have some kind of a, a disk or whatever and you have one force in this direction and another force in this direction, then they are, if they are of the same magnitude and they are opposite in direction, this condition is satisfied, but obviously this disk will rotate, and rotation is definitely not an inertial um, reference frame. So, this is insufficient. All right, so we have to prevent also the rotation. Now, we did um, study rotation separately in the uh, rotational dynamics topic, and we were talking about uh, a very important concept uh, related to rotation. And um, this rotation, and rotation is actually uh, related to this topic in exactly the same fashion as uh, translational movement relates to the force. So what is this? Well, this is torque. Now, torque for rotation plays exactly the same role as force for translational movement along the um, uh, straight line trajectory. And uh, whatever in a translational movement um, is an acceleration caused by the force, in rotation uh, it's the angular acceleration. So force causes acceleration of the point object, torque causes the angular acceleration for objects which are rotating around one particular axis. Okay, now, what if we have a very complex movement in the three-dimensional space of a solid? For instance, it can move around its own axis and then around some other axis, etc. Well, 
you can always imagine any kind of a complex movement of the object as the separate movement around each of the three coordinate axes. In exactly similar manner as any translational movement along a trajectory can actually be always represented as movement along the x-axis, y-axis, and, and z-axis. So, three functions, um, x as uh, a function of the, uh, of the time, t, y as the function of the t, and z as the function of the t, basically describe the movement in the three-dimensional space of a point. Now, in this case of the solid, we are talking about rotation, so we can uh, imagine rotation along one axis, and then another axis, and then the third axis, and these are kind of independent rotation, and every rotation can be basically represented as these three different rotations. Like, first along one axis, then along another, and then along another. And as a result, you will have exactly the same um, kind of rotation which you are dealing with. So, that's why I'm not going to talk about a complicated rotation of the three-dimensional um, solid. I will just talk about rotation of a solid around one particular uh, axis. One. One out of three. Doesn't really matter which one. And the torque, obviously, can be explained in the terms of rotation around one particular axis. And again, if you, if you have a very complicated movement, then we have basically three different torques, if you wish. One rotates around the, this uh, axis, another torque rotated this, and another this. So every force is causing some kind of a torque, and this force can be really um, considered as, as a separate cause of rotation um, around each of the coordinate axes. So let me, let me remind you what exactly torque is if you have a force and you have basically a position of the axis. All right, so here it is. If you have an axis and you have some kind of an object, which is, I'm talking about the point object which is rotating, but it can be actually any solid because every little piece of that solid is basically a point object. And uh, obviously um, we are talking about basically integration of the entire solid from all these individual pieces. And obviously whenever a, a force is applied to this particular point, like in case of our disk for instance, we have one force applied to this point and this to another. Each one has its own torque basically. And since we are talking about rotation around the axis which is probably uh, perpendicular to, the, uh, to, to this board, then we can talk about the torque of this one, torque of that one, and then add them together to cause the um, angular acceleration. So, again, talking about one particular point, this is an axis, and this is the trajectory around this axis. So, um, you can always have a vector, which is R, which basically is uh, from the axis to to the point and you have the force which is also the vector and torque by definition is a vector product of the radius to this particular point which is rotating around this axis uh, and, and the force so if you don't re really remember this I, I would suggest you to go to rotational dynamics where I explain in um, length, at length, what exactly the torque is and why we are, and why we are multiplying um, our force by, um, by the radius vector and why this is a vector product. Now, being a vector product, in a simple case like this one, so you have an axis which is perpendicular to the board, these are two forces, and these are two radiuses, right? This is one, and this is another. Radius, radius, this is force, and this is force. That's all vectors. So the vector product is perpendicular to the components in this particular case, right? So the vector product of R times F would be 
along this axis in this case and along this axis in this case and uh, and if I'm using the right hand rule uh, then it would be either uh, towards the board or outside of the board and uh, obviously in this particular case uh, from R to R so I think it's this way I think it's this way but it doesn't really matter what does matter is it's along the axis so the vector product of the force which is applied to this point and the radius vector of this is supposed to be like perpendicular to both of them and it's within it's along the axis of rotation right so it's also a vector this is tau now after we have basically recalled what's the definition of torque and we have also um, recalled that the torque is the cause of angular acceleration well that means that the necessary condition for um, a, a solid object not to rotate is basically that sum of all torques which are acting on this uh, solid must be equal to zero null vector these are all vectors they're all um, directed along the axis so we can basically add them some of them will be with plus some of them will be with minus now in this particular case both are uh, in one direction but if I will change the direction of this force to this then if I will calculate the vector product of these two it will have certain magnitude which is the product of magnitude of R and, pro and magnitude of F and it will be directed into one direction the product of these two vector product would be um, um, with an opposite sign because this R well if this is R this is minus R actually right because it's supposed to have some direction and so the product will be negative and it will be towards another um, end of this axis which is perpendicular to the board so this is a necessary condition um, sum of all torques to be equal to zero for uh, a solid to be in um, uh, equilibrium so we have basically two different things we have to prohibit translational movement along some kind of a trajectory and this is the condition so sum of all forces which are acting must be equal to zero and we have to prevent the rotation to be in equilibrium right to, to have this particular um, solid in, in equilibrium in some kind of a uh, system so that's another uh, necessary condition now one more very interesting point and um, to tell you the truth I don't know how to how to really very rigorously prove it but it feels right and I would like actually to re refer it to you for a judgment so if all the forces are equal to zero forget about the torques then there must be a point inside the salt uh, inside the solid which is actually not moving well we're talking about some kind of inertial system and we are considering our solid within this inertial system and again if sum of all forces equals to zero it can rotate because I'm not talking about the torques which uh, these forces have but if they just equal in magnitude in and, and direction in such a way that their sum is equal to uh, zero null vector then there must be one particular point well at least one particular point maybe mo many points if it's just rotating the whole axis will be um, uh, at, at one particular uh, position in, in the space not moving right um, so again if the forces are, are, are uh, summarized and uh, give you no vector then there must be at least one point in the solid object which is not moving that's an interesting kind of a um, concept um, I didn't really think thoroughly about how to prove it but it seems it seems right right so only the torques 
basically are causing some rotation but w w whenever you have a real rotation you always have some kind of a point which is not moving at all right the, in the center of rotation or on the axis of rotation okay now um, back to forces and torques so three forces along three dimensions and three torques sum of all the torques along every one every, every, every one of the three dimensions coordinate dimensions x y and z these represent as i mentioned in the previous lecture six degrees of freedom so you have for a solid you have six degrees of freedom it can move along either of the three coordinate axes and it can rotate around either of the three um, coordinate axes and that constitutes basically six degrees of freedom which means that some of the projections of the forces to each axis should be equal to um, zero and some of uh, uh, torques um, along each of the axes if you represent the rotation as a combination of rotation around one axis another axis and the third axis so on each axis it should be equal to zero so we have basically like six equations which must be satisfied to have the system to have the solid in the state of equilibrium okay now we are talking about a couple of examples so let me just represent whatever i'm just talking about um, in in pictures and you will see what I mean. So I have two very simple examples. One is the following. So consider you have a thread, a rod, and the distance is R here and here, and you have the same weight, W here and, uh, and W here. So let's just examine the equilibrium of this system. Now, obviously, it must be in equilibrium, right? Just intuitively obvious. But let's just think about it, how exactly um, it, it works. So what kind of forces we are um, on, on this, uh, acting on this ro rod? Well, the first one, obviously, is tension of the thread. And it's directed upwards. Now, obviously, it's fixed somehow. Now then, this gives you one vector, which is W, and this gives you one vector, which is W. These are equal in magnitude and direction. This one is opposite. So, all the vectors must be, uh, sum of all the vectors must be equal to zero if we are talking about equilibrium so if this point is not moving then obviously t plus w plus w is supposed to be equal to zero no vector which means t is equal to minus 2w well obviously minus is here because if this is the positive direction of the well let's say z axis or whatever the axis we're we are choosing then this is a negative or vice versa so that's why we have this negative it's obvious solution to this uh, vector equation. Now let's talk about torques. Well, this force does not create any torques because it's in the center. We're talking about equilibrium of rotation relative to this center. Why? Well, because again, radius is equal to zero, tau is equal to radius vector product force right so the force is the tension but the radius is zero in this particular case now in this case the force is uh, w and the radius is r uh, so if we consider this direction as a positive and this is x whatever then obviously this is minus r times uh, w in absolute terms right 
we are talking about absolute terms and uh, oh, this is vectors now this is tau 1 now tau 2 which is this one is equal to plus r not w and obviously some of these three this, this and this now this is equal to 0 0 times t so this is 0 this is the torque of this force of the tension this is the torque which weight creates radius times w and this is the torque which uh, this weight creates this radius times w and these two vectors obviously are opposite to each other that's why I put minus in one case and plus in another case so this is 1 and this is tau 2 and sum as you see is 0 so that's what actually makes this system um, to be in equilibrium now the next example is very similar except that I will do it with different radiuses let's consider this is um, 2w and this is 2r and w so this length is twice as big as this one but this weight is twice as big as this one All right so again this is 0 uh, so tau is equal to 0 times t is 0 vector tau 1 which is this one is minus r times 2w and tau 2 is equal to positive 2r times w and from the properties of the vector product this coefficient can be actually um, taken outside of the vector product as well as this one and in both cases we will have minus 2 r times w and in this case we will have 2 r times w and the sum will be equal to zero so we have increased the uh, the radius of uh, rotation by but by the factor of two in one case leaving the weight as it is but in another case we increase the weight and the system will still be in equilibrium and obviously this is the way how people are um, pulling with a with a lever a heavy a stone or something if you have some kind of a stone here very heavy and you would like to this is the person and this person is pushing down this part so this part will go up and if this length r and this length let's say 10 r then the effort to lift should be one tenth of the weight of this stone exactly the same thing as this one well is that the way how Egyptians build the pyramids maybe I don't know but any case this is basically an illustration two examples which illustrate how uh, solids are in equilibrium as far as um, trans uh, tr translational mo mo motion and which is much more important for solids as far as their rotation in one case we need all the forces to sum up to zero along each axis 
uh, in another case for the solids we need not only the forces but for rotation to be in equilibrium well to, to not to rotate basically okay that means we have to have all torques not um, uh, to, to, to be in balance along each um, axis of rotation okay that's it I can refer you back to unizor.com and read the comments to this uh, lecture it can serve you as a as a textbook and um, I also recommend you to be relatively fluent in the course called Mass for Teens because everything which whichever we're discussing in, in physics depends very much on uh, on the mass especially the vector algebra um, calculus so you have to be really comfortable in these areas that's it thank you very much and good luck <laughs>